Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, tomorrow I find out if I match. Um, I won't. I still won't know where I'm gonna end up going, um, but I will know if I matched or if I need to soap. So hopefully, going into emergency medicine, uh, it won't be too difficult to match. Um, but there's still always that chance of of not matching. I would say right now I'm about 90% confident that tomorrow when I open that email, it'll say that I have matched into some sort of program. This last week has kind of drug on, um, but I did have a little bit of a distraction. I had to fly back out to my uh, med school in Kansas City and do another OSCE. So I did that and I went out on Thursday and my OSCE was Friday and then I flew back Friday as well. Um, and then Saturday, so yesterday, uh, just seemed to never end. Just trying to get through this weekend, hopeful, because we find out on Monday um, if we match or not. I would say I have been pretty calm during this entire process, um, pretty confident, and I feel like I've had to be that way because everyone around me is stressing out about where I'm gonna match. And I think that's the case most of the time when you involve family members and friends, like everyone is excited and stressed out about where you're gonna end up for residency. Everyone wants you to be as close to them as possible. And I think it's up to us to kind of reassure them and act confident and calm during this time. Uh, but now that it's one day before we find out about match, it is a little bit anxiety provoking, even for someone going into a very uncompetitive specialty currently. EM never used to be like this. EM used to be one of the most competitive specialties out there. But once that paper got out about how in 2030, there's gonna be like a surplus of physicians and not enough jobs, then it seemed like a lot of people stopped applying for EM residencies. Um, and went to something a little bit safer. That being said, COVID also hit the next year after that paper came out. And so you just have like this stacking effect where you have all of these negative indicators of emergency medicine. During COVID, obviously we saw a lot of burnout, a lot of you know ER physicians actually lost their lives. A lot of them just simply retired early because they didn't want to deal with COVID in the ER, which I don't blame them. Uh, my dad's an ER doc, and so I know all about what was going on in the ER during COVID. And he was on the older side as well, so he was a high-risk person to getting COVID. Luckily, he never got COVID that we know of, um, but it was a scary time for ER docs. And so I don't blame people for not wanting to go into the specialty um, at that time. Of other news, my uh, new shoes came in that I'll be talking about in a future video coming to your way soon. Um, guys, they're so comfortable. Like, I have a pair of Birkenstocks, um, and I just never found them to be super comfortable and they're just so hard to break in as well. And so these new shoes that I got, um, I'll let you guys know what they are in the next video, but um, they're so comfortable, you guys. They look very similar to Birkenstocks. You don't have to break them in. They're like a nice soft leather. They come in like a cork bottom or you can get like a rubber sole as well. So if you guys like the look of that cork bottom like Birkenstocks have, you're gonna love these shoes. But yeah, I am super excited that they are here. So happy to have found a shoe that I enjoy wearing and that I think looks good. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for the video on those. I'm also working with a couple scrub companies. Um, one you guys are very familiar with and then another one that you may not have heard of, but are some of my most favorite scrubs. They're definitely the first pair of scrubs I ever had. And so I'm super excited to introduce those scrubs to you guys. Obviously I'm gonna have discount codes for you guys. So um, check out the descriptions of my videos and you should be able to find my link tree. So it's one link, you click on it and it'll have a bunch of links to all the companies that I work with all the discount codes and all the links that you guys can click on to go and purchase anything that you guys want. This is such a crazy time right now, guys. Like the match is a once in a lifetime 
opportunity um, and experience. And I'm really trying not to wish the time away. And I'm really trying to enjoy kind of this moment and this time that's going by um, because I know it's not going to happen ever again. It's definitely a very like special experience, at least for me. Um, if you guys didn't know, you know, getting into medical school for me was extremely difficult. You know, I didn't have the best grades. I didn't have the best MCAT score. Ultimately, I applied to a ton of med schools and got no interviews. Um, so it just felt like a waste of my time. I did end up doing a special master's program, did really well in that program because it had to do with medicine, had to do with what I actually wanted to learn, unlike organic chemistry and physics. And because I did so well, they offered me an interview to their medical school, and that's how I ended up getting into med school. So fast forward to now, to the match, it's been really awesome to be offered interviews for residency because I didn't have that experience as a pre-med student. I didn't get interview offers uh, for medical school. You know, I had to go out and be proactive and figure out a way to get into medical school that most people don't actually have to do. And I had to be a proactive applicant and make connections and do all of these extra things to get into med school. And that's why I tell you guys as pre-med students and as medical students applying for residency, you need to be a proactive applicant. You can't just submit an application and then sit back and hope everything goes well. You need to make connections. You need to send out emails without being annoying and without being overbearing. Um, you need to show your interest in these places and you need to let them know your worth. So at the end of like audition rotations, at least for emergency medicine, you take uh, usually an exam geared towards emergency medicine and it just helps like the programs kind of get a sense of your knowledge of emergency medicine. Yeah, they have your board scores, but they honestly don't really care much about those and they'd rather see how much emergency medicine that you're coming into residency with. And so luckily I did really well on most of those exams I took three of them because I did three sub eyes. And my very first one was my worst. And so when I got my third score, which was like in November, it was my best score. And so what did I do? I took that score and I emailed it to my first sub I that I did to that program and was like, hey, I know I didn't do as good on your guys's exam, but here's the score that I got on this most recent exam. So I was proactive. I showed them that I am capable of learning and improving. And by sending them that score, it also shows them that I'm showing interest in their program and what they thought about me. So you guys may be in a different situation. You may be in the same situation, but just use those concepts and show programs that you're interested in them. Show them that you're learning, you're adapting, you're improving, and just be a proactive applicant at the end of the day. So one thing that is completely off topic is I was just kind of thinking about how all of those videos were popping up about um, residents and physicians quitting their medical job to pursue social media only. I got to thinking like where some of those people are right now. And it seems like a lot of them have like made MCAT prep companies and courses and study courses and how to like improve your studying techniques and things like that. And I just think like they are going back into the game of taking advantage of students. They may be thinking, hey, they're providing a quality product that's gonna help you and that may be the case, but they're also charging a ton of money for their services, which I also like don't disagree with. You know, they're providing a product they should be compensated for it. But they went through the same struggles as all of us and they know how expensive medical school is and college is. So why aren't we banding together to use our social media influence to changing the game? Why are the pre-med courses the same as they've always been? We all know that the pre-med courses don't prepare you to be a physician. They don't prepare you for medical school. And so it begs the question, why are we taking those specific courses. You know, why are we still taking the MCAT? Or if we are taking the MCAT, why aren't there topics related to medicine on the MCAT? Because there's not. And so it just really frustrates me that these people, they were in medicine, 
they quit to do social media, and now they're going back and taking advantage of pre-med students, of med students, of residents, and so on. Um, I just think it's stupid. One thing I've tried to do for you guys is I created a Google Doc for pre-meds and med students to go in and fill it out, to talk about the pros and cons of each medical school, to talk about the tuition, to talk about your experience at those particular med schools. This will at least get people talking about med schools and getting them to compare each other to one another. And then hopefully these med schools will start looking at this Google Doc and realizing that there's other med schools out there that are much better than than they are. This is something that we have seen within the emergency medicine Google Doc that was created. Program directors um, consistently go onto that Google Doc and try and figure out how to be a more competitive program, a more desirable program, how to improve their program. So this is my hope for medical schools, that if we can get this thing off the ground um, and they can see the comments that you guys are writing obviously this is completely anonymous so nobody's gonna know who actually wrote what but i don't know what else to do to change the game um i think this is a good start but it comes down to you guys if you're gonna make the effort to send this google doc out to everyone that you know in medicine and have them fill it out we definitely need more people to start speaking out about their medical schools the good and the bad uh, I'm not saying every medical school is bad, but the fact that tuition consistently goes up every year and we have no power against that, that's an issue. The link to the Google Sheet will be in the description. Put it on Reddit, send it to your pre-med friends, send it to everyone in medical school, and let's see if we can see some change in the next couple of years. All right, so guys, we're about to find out where I match, if I match, all of those good things. This is the last video I'm gonna post until my match day video, so stay tuned for that one. Thanks for everyone who has been sticking with me throughout this match week vlog. It's been super fun. And so if you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, comment down below where you guys think I'll match or if you guys have any questions, I will answer them. And yeah, here we go, wish me luck. Um, we find out tomorrow. All right, see you guys later.